Okay, so I just woke up, but I can't sleep anymore because this has been on my floor since yesterday and I really want to put it together. So I got a new bookshelf because I saw this on TikTok and I sat on it for a couple months and I just really, really wanted it and I couldn't stop thinking about it, so I got it. I really probably shouldn't, but I did and now I'm going to put it together and I'm so excited. <laughs> Also, when I went to go pick this up from the mailroom, it was like this already. So hopefully there's no damage. We're going to find out. I also didn't really plan ahead when I went to the mailroom because this is a lot taller than I am and it's heavy and it says it's four pounds. It is not four pounds. And I had to waddle this all the way back by myself. That was my workout for the month. Okay, so there are a couple of nicks and scratches, probably from that damage here. And then a little dent in the side there. And this will probably be covered by books. Oh well, it's fine. Luckily, I think we have all the hardware. I don't think anything's missing. Unluckily, the instructions are not very instruction-y and they're in Chinese. Um, I did read a review when I ordered this saying that the instructions kind of sucked and it was kind of figure it out on your own. Hopefully I'm smart enough to do that. Like all of these screws look like they're the same screws, which helps. <laughs> um, yeah. And then they gave me a widow screwdriver <laughs> and for some reason a glove, like a tiny little, little person glove. Oh, it probably fits. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. What is this for? Do they like? Do they like have to have gloves to like put things together in China? Step one looks pretty self-explanatory. This is the bottom base and it's the underside. And you just put these little um, floor pieces on with screws. Like this is supposed to go through a screw through this tiny little hole. But when I put this on, it like completely blocks this hole for me to slide this through. I mean, I kind of can, I guess. Mm. And because I read the reviews, I know that which direction to put these on because the bottom section of the shelf is taller than all the other sections. So I need to make sure I put the tall side on the bottom um, every single side. Thank you, reviews. <laughs> Okay, that was a little difficult to do by yourself because you're putting on such long um, sides and they're like falling into each other because they're like levitating and nothing's holding them up. I ended up using a shelf and just sliding it in there to help hold up some of them as I was trying to screw them in. It would definitely be easier with two people. Anyway, um, I have the sides on and now Per the review, reviews are awesome. Read reviews, especially if you're getting something in a different language. Um, the review said to put these in before you secure the shelves because otherwise it's kind of impossible to put these in. And these are the little um, dowels that like you slide in to between the shelves that kind of help hold the books up. So like they can like push against or whatever. Get, you'll know what I mean. Anyway, so I'm gonna put these in each shelf before I screw in the shelf above it. Yeah. <laughs>
taller than me. Like, it's so like Japanese aesthetic and I plan to put manga on it. Ah, not a fun part of decorating. <laughs> Now, I really would have liked to put all of my Brandon Sanderson on the shelf because top fave series and I would like to have it out here in the living room where I can see it regularly instead of in the bedroom. But as you can see, they're all drastically different sizes and additions and I have tried for like 30 minutes to fit them on in an aesthetically pleasing way and they just, they ain't doing it. Uh, I need to get a cohesive set. and. Since the series is so ongoing and continuous, like it's just gonna be a while before I get a nice and pretty set. So, sorry Cosmere, you're not going up there. <laughs> also, can we take a minute just to discuss the view right here? Cause you know I saw that at the store and I had to get it. amazingly beautiful print from the cursive and print shop and it's just it's so beautiful the colors are amazing it's very Japanese aesthetic and I I'm obsessed I love it um and I think it will look really good in this little corner over here especially with all the manga
the plan is to hopefully, hopefully this gets enough sunlight over here because the window's so far away, I'm kind of worried. But if it can grow, it would be really nice when it gets big and it starts like drooping down. That will look really pretty over the wood. And since we couldn't fit any of our Cosmer books, we might as well at least put our little Sunni pup over here. <laughs> He's so cute. Here's a brief view of the shelves in my bedroom, just so you know, when I say I have way too many books, I am not lying. <laughs> this is probably my favorite thing on my shelf, and it is Hamtaro, and I love him, and I will forever love him. Here is Inbot, a spaceship, who is the second best AI. Actually, it's a close tie between him, Aiden and Inbot for my favorite AI characters. They're both really good. Mbot might be better, depending how the Skyward series goes. This is my little hairy coo Hamish. Say hi. This isn't if you know you know. So if you know, let me know. <laughs> all right, I might as well show you all my books. So here's another shelf that I have with the pretty, beautiful, ooh, ah, books. Look how pretty, they're so shiny and beautiful. I can't wait for the fourth Sanderson one. It's so beautiful. And we have the leather bound Mistborn. Oh, so nice, ah. So now is probably a good time to go over some favorite books if you wanna know about some of my favorite books. So one side of this is manga, then books, then manga, then books because I did not have enough manga to fill the whole shelf. Eventually I probably will because I definitely have holes in my collections and I'm probably just going to get more. I don't right now because manga is expensive. I guess let's start with manga because that's just easier to talk about. Obviously my, my, my bongo, my bongo stray dogs, my babies, that is going to get more. Uh, I do not have that many of the manga because they, money. Uh, I actually try to go to a secondhand bookstore as often as I can and try to only buy them when they're on discount. And I got most of the ones I have at like $3. I know, amazing. Uh, also, look, little Shuya. <laughs> ah, love him. Uh, some of these are actually not even mine. I'm borrowing some of these, <laughs> but you know, whatever. So Bungo will get bigger. Uh, then I have just a bunch of random ones. In my youth, Blood Plus was a very big anime in my life. So I have some of those. <laughs> Moving on to the other manga, I have my Beastars collection, which is almost complete. I need like six or seven more. And then that will be done. And I'm so excited to have that complete. And I love these stars. And I'm going to be Haru with my bestie Lagoshi at Dragon Con this year. And so excited. <laughs> I have the complete set of Fruits Basket, which was the OG manga that got me into manga. This was the series that started it all. And it holds a special place in my heart. And I love it. And I love the zodiacs and all the little animals on the back. Well, she's not an animal, but I love them. <laughs> This manga is a complete uh, set thing. Uh, it's like just one story. This makes me sad, it makes me cry, I love it. I love things with really weird names. So when I saw I want to eat your pancreas, I was like, oh, need to have it. My, now I have my book collection and at the top of one side I have the Allie Hazel, Hazelwood um, collection. These are all very science-centered books, um, academic-centered, women in STEM, and they are ace and demisexual rep, and I freaking adore them. They're very similar in their setups, like they're, they're very similar patterns, but if you like the first one, you'll like all of them. Like if you like that setup, then it's good. And like I said, I love the sciencey nerdy girls and I love the ace demi rep. My all-time favorite MLM contemporary romance book, Red, White, and Royal Blue. The movie just came out. It wasn't as good as the book, but it still hit me in the feels because the chemistry between Alex and Henry is... But the book is the most beautiful. It, the, the movie was lacking the emotional impact of the book and all the deep in-depth um, inner monologue and everything and the realizations that come out throughout the book and the self-discovery and also the acceptance by others and it's just it's so heartwarming it's so beautiful i highly recommend this book <laughs> 
Then I have my little sci-fi shelf here. Uh, I actually have a lot more sci-fi, but these are just the ones that fit on the shelf. Uh, Illuminae Files, the trilogy, is one of my favorite sci-fi books and series simply because the style of the book like is just so unique like it's very documenty and like text ims and like memos and like redacted like files and it's it's really freaking good like the concept of this series is amazing and it's each different um book in the trilogy follows two um new romance set up characters and they're in different ships or planets depending on the book that it's in it's all intermingled into one overarching plot but they like have their own little sub plot in each book and at the end they just all come together and it culminates it's a very catastrophe things blow up we're gonna die race against time type sci-fi and it's just it's so good it has the best ai character ever aiden is my little baby and i don't care what you say he can do no wrong he does a lot of wrong but he can do no wrong to me and beside it i just um snuck in project hail mary because that is also one of the cutest sci-fis with the cutest companion ever not an ai but i don't want to spoil the companion because i went in blind and going in blind i think is the best way to see how things turn out but it is one of the cutest books and obviously Andy Weir always does great comedy with his science fiction. Then I have my Raven Boys down here because we are a safe as life family in this household and I can't do without them. Growing up I have always been into Studio Ghibli. Studio Ghibli holds my heart and I wanted to get the um Diana Wynne Jones. Yeah the Diana Wynne Jones um little books. They're middle grade books so they're very easy to read. They're very short and you can fly through them but there's like three that inspired Howl's Moving Castle and this one actually is my favorite. I don't know if that's a bad opinion or not. Howl's Moving Castle is really good and I enjoyed it but House of Many Ways is super whimsical and I loved the character development and I just loved the whimsy. Like it's it's a really cute book and it's it doesn't have Howl and Sophie in it. Like they pop up, they like cameo in it but it's following a different character and she's a young girl and it's she's a wizard's apprentice and it's just it's really cute and it's a house that has doors that lead to various different things and she gets lost and things happen and it's beautiful <laughs> all right i feel like it's about to storm and it's getting darker so i'm gonna try and like hurry up uh this shelf is just really cute books that i love the house in the cerulean sea I describe this book as a cozy, warm hug. I cannot recommend this book enough. It is the cutest little found family that you could ever hope for. And there's queer rep, there's ostrac ostracization, ostracization. It's about children that just want to be accepted by society, no matter what society's view of them could be based on the role that they're supposed to play. It's a very like nature versus nurture type set up but it's just it's so cute it's so cute it has a curmudgeon old dude that be, his heart thaws for these adorable little monstrous children and i just i love it i love it chauncey is the best character he is a little green blob whose only dream in life is to be a hotel uh concierge that's all he wants it's the cutest thing in the world and also i got to meet tj clune at um y'all fest and i got it signed and he signed it be like chauncey so this is my baby i also i need to get the third book of tj clunes in this like kind of realm because i really love that the spines all have houses on them and they look really cute lined up together i love it a man called ove like the most beautiful tale of a curmudgeon old man who again his heart thaws for the family that moves in next door he is a very grumpy guy he has lost his way after his wife's death and he doesn't know what to do with himself and he wants to just end life but he finds this family and they bring little moments to his life that interrupt his plans and make him frustrated but it's just the most heartwarming story and there's a cat and I cried so much at the end of this and I cannot not have this book like it this 
I can't words when books make me emotional. Like this book is so good. This is a good emotional purge book and I highly recommend. My Name is Memory is a beautiful book. It's sentimental to me because of how I got it, but it's a also just a beautiful book. It's a very unique um, reincarnation faded lovers books where these two people are fated to be together and they keep dying because of various circumstances and their lifespans don't usually match up at the right time, but they always find each other when they reincarnate. And it's just a really unique story and I love it. All right, coming down low because I don't want to pull these out, but Once Upon a uh, Broken Heart trilogy, the third one will be out this year. One of my favorite trilogies yet. Like Stephanie Garber really has found her way in like Carval was, it was okay. I liked it, I enjoyed it, I read it. It was a cool circusy type story with uh, faded gods and everything. But the Once Upon a Time trilogy or Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy is everything I needed. It's whimsical, it has vampires, it's like enemies to lovers, rivals to lovers, like having to work together, forced proximity type thing. And it's the doomed, male character lead that has given up on love but love is worming its way right back in there and I just I cannot stress how much this book is beautiful. <laughs> All right moving to the other uh side the last side I have other favorites on the bottom I have Six of Crows duology which is one of my favorite heist duologies ever like the found family and the different the six different characters like it, they just work so well together and the story just keeps getting suspenseful and it never stops and you just want to keep reading and it's just so well done and I love it. Uh, the Song of Achilles is probably my favorite MLM book ever, which is saying something because I'm really bad at picking favorites, but I annotated the heck out of this chonker. Like, I love this book. This book, the end of this book, I have never yelled so much. I'm not going to say if that's a good or a bad yell because I don't want to spoil it. I'm sure everyone's heard of this book by now, but I have never physically yelled and like gasped so much at an end of a book than this book. Oh my dear God. <laughs> if you don't know anything about this, this is a Greek mythology retelling following Patroclus and Achilles. It's Patroclus's point of view and he is the beloved of Achilles that is not recognized by society. Beautiful. All right, so I have a whole bunch of pirate books that I am, if I had to choose, if you had to sit me in a corner and say, choose what your favorite thing is to read, it would be sci-fi and pirates. Those are the books that just hit that little itch inside me and I can't like not love them. Science fiction, sp specifically space set science fiction and um, pirate settings are just, I can feel myself in the books and in the situations. So. I will pretty much always love a pirate and space setting book. So I have a lot of piratey ones here. I have Daughter of the Pirate King duology, which is just really fast paced and fun. If you're in a slump, it's a great book to get into. Um, and then I have my Adrian Young Fable series, saga, whatever. Um, I'm missing one of them actually. I really need to get that. But I love these books. I love Saint most. Saint won my heart. I am always a sucker for the um, the the daddy stuff, like any of the trauma-induced dad-related stuff where the dad really cares for the daughter. I'm a sucker for that. <laughs> anyway, um, then I have my opposite of the Raven Boys. I have my uh, Dreamer trilogy because Declan is daddy. That's what I'm going to say for that. If you haven't, if you've read the Raven Boys but haven't read Dreamer trilogy, and that statement is throwing you off of why I think Declan is daddy, read the trilogy because that's the the synopsis of this trilogy. Declan is the king. <laughs> then I have my a little um my little sci-fi uh, Lunar Chronicles with the beautiful new covers, which I think also fits well with the manga theme going on. Those are all uh, fairy tale space science fiction retellings. So each book is a different fairy tale. You have uh, Cinderella, Red, Red Riding Hood, Tang, or Rapunzel, and Snow White. So it's really cute, really unique set. All right, and the last one I'm gonna talk about because this is probably way too much and you probably already like zoned out by now. 
but the anything Elise Kova writes, like all of her books, I don't know if she chooses this specifically, but she has a very unique style, art style for her book covers, and it's very anime-esque. And that's why this specifically I put on this shelf because they just fit. And this is one of my favorite cover arts ever. Like I love this cover art of Air Awakens. Um, Air Awakens is a five book series. It's a very elemental magic series and like, you know, save the kingdom type series and the lost, basically airbender. It's very Avatar The Last Airbender vibes. She is the only air user known <laughs> right now. And she's like a peasant basically. And so it's her. And then, you know, she gets involved with the kingdom and the, the crown and all of that. So Prince loner girl type dynamics. At least Elise Kova also has her Married to Magic series. Each book is different, like they're in the same realm, but they're not really tied together so you can read them however you want. This is the first one, A Deal with the Elf King. I just love the art and I also got this signed um, from her and it says The Elf King Awaits, which I just think is really cute, but they're very tropey. If you don't like tropey kind of romances, you wouldn't really like these. All of these are forced marriages, basically. Uh, they're different plots and developments. There's usually some kind of issue with the kingdom involved that has to be resolved throughout this forced marriage, and that's usually the cause of the forced marriage, but they're still fun if you like that trope and if you like that kind of romanticy, then I recommend these, but the artwork is beautiful. Anyway, so that was my little bookshelf tour, impromptu tour of some of my favorites. I do have other favorites that are on my shelves in my bedroom, but I really try to make these fit um, size-wise. That is the one thing you have to consider if you get this shelf, if you don't like different heights to be by each other. I was trying to make them all consistent with manga heights, so. I couldn't fit some of my favorites on here, but I did get a lot of favorites that I love on here and I think it'll be great to be able to just see them when I'm in the living room and I love it and this shelf is so beautiful and I can't wait to get more manga to fill it. If you like any of those books, let me know. I'd love to talk about them. I love discussing books. If you have some recommendations that you think I would like based on these books, drop them because I am all for recommendations, especially piratey or sci-fi. Send those my way. Or manga. I'll take manga too. I'm right now preferring complete manga and smaller manga because, you know, expensive and just time. So the only ongoing one that I'm reading right now is Bungo Stray Dogs. I guess I will see y'all. Next time will probably be a cosplay video. So yeah. Anyway, love you guys. <laughs>